Hey guys! I don't know why one time I made videos with that stupid cap on, but you know, it was just one of those ways to differentiate yourself and I thought, hey, what a great idea. But not really so much a great idea. That thing's hot and it gets all over you and I don't really think it appeals or makes any video better. But all right, so solving this multi-step problem. And the reason why this is a multi-step is, well, we have one step. There's obviously more than one step into isolating a variable. There's obviously more than two steps isolating our variable. Um, so it's going to be called multi-step. Now, the thing to notice about this problem is I have parentheses. And when I have parentheses, I automatically think of order of operations and distributive property. Automatically, that's the first thing I just look at. When I see my parentheses, I'm automatically thinking, all right, order of operation. That means I need to work inside the parentheses first. So I look inside here, and there's nothing that I can, these are not like terms, so I can't do, I can't combine like terms inside the parentheses. Then the next thing I look at is distributive property. Can I apply the distributive property? And for this one, it's true, yes, I need to, because I have a negative one, right? When you have minus a parenthesis, that's really a negative one is being multiplied for all these terms. So what I need to do is I need to make sure I apply the distributive property and then I'll go from there. So I have 8n minus 2n plus 3 equals 12. Listen, follow please. Negative, or let's, let's do it, I'll say it two ways. Negative 1 times 2n is negative 2n. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. The other way sometimes we like to think of uh, the negative symbol is the opposite, right? The opposite of a positive 2n is negative 2n. The opposite of negative 3 is a positive 3. There you go. So now what we need to do is, remember we need to isolate our variable. We need to get our variable, one little variable, n, to equal something. Well, here I have two of these variables. Um, but since they are both to the n factor, what I can do is I can combine them. They have, both have the same linear factors. I can combine these. So 8n minus 2n just becomes 6n plus 3 equals 12. Now we can see we're at a two-step equation. I'm going to run through this a little bit quicker for you. But remember, it is undo our operations. First thing we're going to do, I'm going to undo everything that's happening to the n. So I'm going to undo addition first by using addition property of equality. So therefore, I have 6n equals 9. Then I'm going to divide by 6. Therefore, I have n equals. 9, 6, which I'm automatically starting to think ahead. We can reduce that. Um, dividing by 3 on the top and bottom, we should get 3 halves. So we could say n is equal to 3 halves. And for those of you that still can't get out of the decimal world, 1.5. So there you go. That's just a quick little demonstration on how to solve the problem. Thanks.